Hello, folks, and hey, Bear. Welcome to the Nate Land Podcast. I'm Nate Bargetzi, Brian Bates, Aaron Weber, uh, Dusty Slay. All right. Okay, life is busy, and your well-being is important. Athletic Greens makes it so easy to get the vitamins you need every day with just one scoop. Athletic Greens has given you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Visit athleticgreens.com slash Nate for a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. That's athleticgreens.com slash Nate. There it is. There it is. So this is the... Uh, final episode of the year for us to be recording. We will have a best of air the last week of January, and then we will be last uh, week of the year. I mean, last week of the year, December, <clears throat> mm-hmm. and then uh, we'll be back January third, uh, which is or whatever that Wednesday. Yeah, but first year we'll be here recording. So this is uh, yeah, yeah, this is it mm. of the of the year for us. I'm gonna miss you guys, man. Yeah. Miss you too, buddy. See you next year. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, it's uh, uh, it's been a good year. Is it Dusty's? You you added you were added this year. Yeah. Feels like for too long. Yeah. And yeah. forever ago. Forever ago. Yeah. Can't. It's tough to believe it. Just it used to be just the three of us. I know. You I know can't. I mean? Well, the good old days. The good old days. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I call them. It'll be interesting to see who we find for next year. And uh, we tried Dusty. Yeah, you got to switch it good, up. You know, we had a good go. Yeah, yeah. you yeah. don't want to run something in the ground. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's awesome. Uh, and uh, speaking of which, talk about my special uh, Amazon uh, January thirty first. It'll be on Amazon, taped at Phoenix Celebrity Theater in the round. Uh, very excited. Uh, very excited. Uh, Hello World is the name, uh, which I do have. Will you get her to get my phone again? Uh, and I will send you it because I can, I, can, I can talk about the, uh, the name. Uh, the name of the special. And, uh, you know, I know some people asked about uh, – uh, Amazon. Uh, uh, let me send you this uh, photo. Uh, people asked about uh, Amazon, and uh, can I do AirDrop? Is that what you? You can AirDrop it to uh, to me. Yeah. Oh, why is it? Not? If you want, Aaron's my. I can text Pro. it to you. You can text it to me as well. Does it go to your computer? Or? It'll go. Either one is fine. Uh, Whatever pops up. So don't put it up there yet. Okay. I'll explain the name and. Uh, or reason, but so people did ask about going to Amazon versus Netflix, and that it's uh, it was really I can own it. At, uh, I'm going to get to own my special at Amazon. That that was the the nice. big reason. That's great. So uh, Amazon will have it, and then they will, and from after that, I'll I'll get to own it. And so that was important to me with this one. Is I've never owned a special, uh, you know, my album mm-hmm. yelled at by a clown, but been past that, you don't own it. So. I, w- I wanted to own this one, so that was a, a big thing. And Amazon is getting into the stand-up game. They did Gafkins a while ago, and then uh, I think they're trying to make a, you know, hopefully uh, more of a push into Amazon. I'm a giant Prime video fan. I watch Prime. I'm not just saying it because I, I, truly that's what I watch yeah, now. Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, but I still watch Netflix. Netflix, Netflix has changed my life. Uh, so it's, it has nothing to do with that, but it's, it's fun for me for that reason. Uh, and I'm excited for this, uh, yeah, this special to come out. Uh, and we did, uh, the name of Hello World is, uh, I was just trying to like, you know, I don't ever have the specials. They're, they've all been kind of uh, a, like the Tennessee Kid or the Greatest Average American. Or it's, it's, it's kind of a broad description mm-hmm. and uh, of, of those. And uh, Full Time Magic and Yellow Bad Clown were both from a joke I said. But the ones that I've done since then, Tennessee Kid and, and the Greatest Average American, were just the other names. And so this one, uh, I liked Hello World. Just <clears throat> I don't know. It's uh, I think it was pleasant. I wanted to, you know, just be like when you look at it, it's it's uh, it's 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 it was nice. It's a nice greeting. 
So it's like you want to be like, well, I'm hoping this special is like that for people that watch it. Like it's something that's pleasant. That's not, you know, uh, it's just, you know, dumb, <clears throat> funny. It's and, not goodbye world. It's, it's not goodbye <laughs> world. It's hello yeah. world. It's yeah. nice. And uh, it's also a nod to Tiger Woods, who uh, uh, he said it. And, and this isn't really hello world. Was I? I I'm hoping that. All the specials have been big. I'll be. I'm interested to see what this one does. It's hopefully you know as we've started moving into we're doing Bridgestone Arena, we started doing some bigger places. Like this could be one that and going to a new place. And Amazon's doing this. And Amazon, they they like the name Hello World. It's kind of just like all right, here's a new mm-hmm. like next kind of phase. Let's see where we go from this. And uh, and so and but it, the fun add to that is Tiger Woods said that when he turned pro. Uh, when he was 18, he said, I guess, hello, world. And I got to meet Tiger Woods. Whoa. I got to meet him. <laughs> and right. that uh, was the best. That was the day. That was when I was like, well, we're definitely calling it hello, world. Now. Yeah. 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 I did a, uh, and I didn't post about this, but I did a, uh, like some private thing for like the PGA something. And so Tiger and Rory uh, were there and they did a, like an interview at the beginning so they were and i didn't know they were going to be there when i first took the gig and then they like a week before they were like hey tiger and rory's coming to speak and i mean i was like are you kidding me dude and so the lady was like very nice she's like oh yeah we're introducing you to tiger and i'm like come on like you know, that's <laughs> yeah. the that's the guy i don't know i don't know if there's another person i mean there's a few others i would like to meet but it's like tiger's the he's number one yeah and so i was like well that's crazy and then so I go, uh, I do the show. Then I was waiting. I was like, you know, I was there very early. And uh, it was at the Breakers in uh, West Palm Beach. And uh, so we do the show. All right, I'm waiting in the green room. And then she goes, all right, we have Tiger for you. And I was like, oh, man. And so Tiger's about to go in this room. And, like, it's it was, like, for something. Like, it was, you know, I don't know, a bunch of executive something. And uh, so uh, I get to go talk to him beforehand. And I and I told him I'm naming this special special. Uh, it wasn't con- I wasn't confirmed naming it that, but then when I I was like I'm, I'm gonna name it Hello World, which is a nod to him. Uh, and I'm not trying to compare myself to Tiger or don't <laughs> anybody like I, I I really just was trying to think of something that's nice, yeah, and like something that's positive and something that, that I wanted it to be like very open and welcoming to be like. I'm just trying to have fun. I don't take myself this serious. But uh, it's he also said that, which is also what made me. I always love that when he said, I guess, hello world, like his uh, first introduction. Did uh, he have a reaction to that? Did he know what you meant by that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. he uh, he was like, oh, that's cool. Like, yeah. you know, I mean, this guy gets to- told anything and everything pr- all day long. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it was, he was uh, very cool about it. It was awesome. Was the I mean the best? It was exactly everything you wanted it to be. Yeah, yeah. I and I and I think I met him at a right time. I don't know if it would have been a while ago. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, sometimes life seems has, happy there, dude. He was he went in you this, maybe not. He went in this room while I was in the middle of uh, I don't know what I was doing. Yeah. <laughs> they just took that picture and uh, and he he was he told me about his first time he was on Fallon. Cause I said I was a comedian, I got, and I was like, I'm a comedian on the show. And he goes, he goes, we got to go up after you. And I was like, no, no, I'm like, I'm on when they're cleaning up in the middle. And I was like, they, cause they went up and they talked, and then they left immediately. And then I did not get to meet Rory. Rory came up at the very end next to Tiger, and I was like, Tiger was telling about Fallon, and then I would have liked to meet Rory, but it was uh, Rory was just standing there, and then then that was about when they go all right. They needed them to go in, so I didn't get to say anything. I didn't. Even You're not going to cut Tiger off to say. I'm not Tiger. Or. Give me a second. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> yeah. I'm just happy that I'm even here. And so then they go in the room, and then they start talking to the execs. And I mean, dude, Tiger is like the most fun. Was just like you could, if he like he could sit at this table and we could just talk about stuff. It, that's what it honestly felt like. Okay. And uh, he, which if he comes, Dusty, you might be. I might yeah, get I'll rid of. A, I'll be honest. With you, I'll get rid of everybody. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if Tiger, if Tiger Woods wants to do this podcast, I go. Everybody's everybody's gone. Uh, I get it. And uh, I'll leave. <laughs> uh, there, but he was he was super fun, and he just was like so charming and like 
You could, I saw you, I I sat in the back of the room and watched him walk around and talk to everybody and I mean he just gave everybody time and like it was very very cool to see. That's awesome. And then he went up there and they interviewed him. They were talking about you know just in the past like just doing a uh, you know they had a uh, guy ask questions and he even talked about a joke about the senior tour. There's some senior tour guys there that run it and he's like I mean he goes I can have a cart when I go out with you guys right? And he's like <laughs> pointing at them and they were like yeah and like he was. You know, like just like very fun. Work in the room. Man. Work in the room. And uh so it was cool. I don't know. I'm hoping he'll remember that I said that I'm naming this special. I'm like, I named it after you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a kind of aggressive thing. But it's uh it it was unreal to get to meet him. And uh and that's where and so that that is part of where the name came from. It's a little nod to golf. I've got a golf story in it. Uh and uh and it's a pleasant name. Yeah. That's great, man. And that's why. Congrats, well, dude. Thank it's you. exciting. That's why we're at Amazon. So some people are asking, wondering. <clears throat> Hope you don't mind me saying this. I got a sneak peek of special. And I envisioned from Aaron's story about chastising a guy saying enough that Aaron was in the very back up at the top. I'm watching the special, like third row up, there's Aaron. <laughs> You see Aaron oh, my oh, yeah. right in the middle. Oh, I'm like, I love it. You're Aaron's- yelling at people right in front of Nate? <laughs> Aaron's first special. I love yeah. it. Welcome to Amazon. Amazon man. credit. I'll take it. Uh, yeah, it shows you. I think you see it a few times. It'd be fun if people can figure out before and after the enough. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I tried to g- glance at it. I think I could probably have a window of it. I could point out the guy that I did it Yeah, to. yeah. <laughs> so when it comes out, and then people watch it. We'll let them see. See if they can. If I wonder if people can figure out the before. A, you got to pick the guy. Yeah. Because yeah. I think I did point to you the guy, and I was not. It wasn't the guy I thought. Uh-huh. And so, but you can see, and try to find out when was the before. What joke was? Would you remember? I, I the, don't remember when it was in the yeah. set. But the reason I had to do it is because we were so close. Okay. It's like, well, this is like this is potentially a problem. Here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm trying to save. You're helping special. Nate out. He helped me. Oh, out. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I thought you were just yeah. helping out the audience around you. You're helping yeah. out the main oh, guy. It's all one and the same. We all have the same. Yeah, goal. that helps to make Nate. A good yeah, special. if the uh, if people around that guy can't pay attention, then it hurts Nate. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's true. That's true. So That's you, why you want Aaron on the third row. Yeah. <laughs> You see Aaron move. Aaron just walks on the third row. He just is the whole time is Aaron. Pace around. He just circles. <laughs> yeah. And just with a shirt that says enough. And he just walks up to it at points. You see enough. him get up and go to concession stand a couple of times. <laughs> yeah. You should sell a shirt that says enough. People have asked me about that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Enough. I should. Do you tell them enough? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Enough. I've heard that I got enough. Enough. <laughs> uh, yeah. So it's, uh, yeah, super pumped. Uh, super excited. January 31st. It'll be fun. It'll be fun. You never know. You always get nervous. Because you, then you're like, before you, when I was doing this material, you're like, this, I was like, I'm very happy with this material. I really, really like it. And then you tape it and then you're like, I don't know, I stink, dude. Like, you know, you're like, I don't, this might be the worst. And, uh, but you always just, I, I mean, I think it's good. I'm going to have those feelings, but it's, uh, I am very excited about it. So we're seeing a Met Tiger. Worst case, That's worst case, maybe he watches. So it. great, man! If I can get just Tiger, yeah, to give it a go. He goes, I've tried. He goes, I tried to make it through it. Like, That's fair, man. Just one view, but you're like, can I see who it was? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, so there's there, there's that. Uh, I think, and that's it, right? Yeah, yeah this weekend yeah. I was in Florence, had a great show with Henry Cho. Oh, yeah, so Laura was great. born. Mm-hmm. These guys were in San Diego. Did I hang out? San Diego? Out? No, I didn't hang out. Yeah, well, I went to the zoo looking for him. He invited <laughs> me, and then, he, and then he wasn't there. He's mad I outsold him. Yeah. You know? Sold out all my shows. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, I heard about no, that. I didn't. Yeah. Uh, all right. So, uh, yeah, we are pre-recording this one, so <laughs> I like to let people they yeah, keep yeah, yeah. it consistent. They always know. Uh, but, yeah, happy Merry Christmas. Uh <laughs> Scott Russell. Hello, folks. Love the show and all the banter and epic rants. So nice to have a clean option that's funny but not cheesy. Tell Beatitude. 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 To keep up the good work, for as the good book says, the meek shall inherit the earth. Keep up the good work. Hmm. You calling me meek? I I guess so. I think that's exactly what he's doing. And I don't imagine that's not good. Uh... (laughs) 
<laughs> well, I'm going to inherit the earth. Yeah. Yeah, but it'd be a bunch of you meeks. Yeah, very meek. And then one of you are going to try to rise to the top and become a mock. <laughs> Is a meek an animal too? A mink, like M I N K. Yeah, I yeah. feel like a, a mink is an animal, but I don't. Yeah. Not a fur, mink. mink fur. Yeah, yeah. Well, mink is technically an animal. It's a bunch of animals gonna take the earth. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Just like the good book says. Yes, yeah. the good book says. Uh, no, that's that's very nice. You are the meek. <laughs> uh, meek does not mean weak. I learned that in Bible school. Uh, oh, well, what right. does it mean? It rhymes. Not strong. Uh, <laughs> it's close. Just means peaceful and yeah, yeah, uh, oh, yeah. submissive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Easily imposed on. Uh, <laughs> that yeah. beat me. Yeah, they take they uh, <laughs> the wow. meek inherits the earth until someone comes. Give me that earth, and they go. All right, yeah, you have it. You <laughs> yeah, have it. You yeah, have it. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure, dude. I don't care. Uh, a add a d d o one two eight. Mm. Why is Brian so condescending? Oh, wow. mm. The show is great. I listen every week. Everyone seems to mesh well except Brian. <laughs> He's constantly undermining Dusty for no reason. Well, that's what I always say. Oh, every I time that. I leave the podcast, I go, Brian just kept undermining <laughs> yeah. me. I'm not being They con- say he's meek, but <laughs> I'm not being condescending. I just have to speak slow because Dusty's so dumb. <laughs> <laughs> He's the meek and the bold. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the meek and the bold. Now, that's a show. Well, yeah. Dusty, I apologize for that. I will work on that in 2023. Well, well not it's been, today, though. It's been heavy. <laughs> no, not today. It's been heavy on me. Yeah. So thank you, ADD0128, for bringing that up. Yeah. yeah. And ADD, I don't know if it's he or she, still gave us five stars. So. Oh, All right. thanks. Oh, wow. We appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, and we mean that. I mean it. I think us three mean it. I don't know about Brian. But, no. uh, <laughs> yeah. Brian answers all the emails. That's all this stuff he responds to. That's it's a giant task. It is. Would you mind saying at the top where we get these? Because yes. people are just emailing me directly now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they're just calling his house phone. <laughs> they have texted me. He goes, Have they? Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. How do they have your number? It's out there. Yeah. It's on my website. Uh, <laughs> is it? <laughs> it still is? Yeah, oh, it's yeah. on my Facebook page. It's yeah, it's out there. Down. Yeah, it's hard not to. Yeah, but that's what people love. Uh, comments come from Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Apple Podcast reviews. Nate Land at NateBargetzi dot com or just text Brian. Uh, <laughs> no, that's what it said. I read it word for word. Well, all right. <laughs> no, don't. We would. They don't. Don't text him. It's a lot. But you respond to all these. It, it's a ton. We we I we've do. grown. To be a lot of people respond. It's a lot. Mm-hmm. And we, uh, yeah. Uh, so you do a great job. Thank you. Uh, I think people would like it if you were more, uh, what's the word? Less M- condescending? More meek. A little, a little more meek. A little more condescending, yeah. Not undermining. In condescending. <laughs> or in condescending could be descending. the most. If you were descending. Pro-descending. Pro-descending. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, your condescending means mm. something up to something. Mm-hmm. Would you say, Dusty? Well, we said in, <laughs> you always do this to me, though, for real. Where, where you like? Oh, no, you do. Where, where you'll go? What'd you say? And then I'm like, well, it was something I was just gonna let go. Well, I didn't but want then you I'd to say it. Well, um, in condescending, if we learned from the last podcast, in valuable means the most valuable. Yeah. So in condescending means the most, most condescending, condescending you can be. Like, there's not even a value to the amount of condescension. Mm. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's a ton of, and it's yeah. a, it's a, <laughs> there's a ton of condescension. I don't mean you do, but you will, you know, because you you would keep me included. Yeah, right? yeah. But yeah. you, you know, sometimes I'll be like, I'm gonna go ahead and let it go, and you're yeah. like, no, 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 no. Yeah, you brought the podcast to a screeching <laughs> halt. That's Let's true. dig into that real quick. <laughs> it's condescension. That's when uh, water's underneath the. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh. Nathan Long, as a longtime listener, I was totally against Dusty joining the crew. Mm. All right. Uh, so far, I'm in. <laughs> He's going to screw it all up. How can you not believe in dinosaurs? Has the arrival of Dusty ruined one of the few great things I have going in my life? Fast forward today, and Dusty is one of my favorite comedians. 
Long live Dusty. All right. Uh, yeah. Turn around. Man. I love that. Now if we can just get you to not believe in dinosaurs, yeah. then <laughs> we'll, it will be complete. You guys are going to be real close. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dusty and Nathan could hang out and just got to get these dinosaurs, man. Dusty believes in Godzilla, but not dinosaurs. Yeah. We well, if about. dinosaurs existed, Godzilla, I believe Godzilla could have existed. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he's essentially a dragon. Am I right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't mm-hmm. know why we're calling it Godzilla. He's a dragon. Just because we were giving the his name, name right? for the movie. Yeah, it's for his name. Oh, okay. Yeah. This is a movie. Godzilla sounds good. <laughs> uh, I don't know if I read into it. Uh, <laughs> It'd be like Dragon versus King Kong would be like. I guess a, Dragon yeah. versus Giant Gorilla is not <laughs> yeah. as fun, is it? It's yeah. not as, yeah. yeah. That's like one, uh, yeah, that's like when you watch like a YouTube, you're watching like a <laughs> right. bear yeah. and a rhino fight. <laughs> right. And, you know, dragon versus Giant Gorilla. You're like, oh, I wonder who would win that. <laughs> uh, Wendy Johnson, Nate, after watching you perform so many times, I was wondering if you purposely use body language and gestures when performing. In one special, you straighten and smooth down your jacket a bunch of times, and in many shows, you stand with your heels together in a V. Do comedians o- incorporate stuff like this in their acts as part of their style when performing? Uh, yeah, I don't know. You kind of just naturally do what you do, and so whatever's come to I mean, I know I'll put my hand behind my back. I st- I've always stood with that V. Yeah. Just because I've just always done that. I've learned now, like I, I, cause I'll shuffle a little bit on, on, cause it's, uh, and like I'll kick the back of my heels. Like I do, I just can feel myself do like some weird stuff. And you know, sometimes you could maybe make a movement for like when there's a punchline or you do something. Uh, I don't know if it's like on, it, it, it's not, it's, it's without realizing you're really yeah. doing it. Somebody this weekend was like, Aaron, I noticed you put your hand behind your back. Are you doing that as an homage to Nate? Yeah. And I was like, oh, my God. I did the whole I next show it. hand in the pocket. <laughs> I was like oh, just thinking about it the whole time. And uh, a shot at me. No, I was like, <laughs> now you're doing it in defiance. Well, I was like, I am subconsciously Gross. doing it. Yeah. I, I didn't even realize it's just a comfortable way to stand. Mm-hmm. But it is your signature pose. But I figured it out first. It's your signature move. Yeah. It's like that's Dave Chappelle hitting the mic on his knee. Yeah. That's well. you. That's you. With arm behind the back. Which I've started doing that. Have you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm t- it's yeah. kind of my tag. <laughs> yeah. Just how that. awkward it would be. <laughs> Joke. No one's laughing. <laughs> <laughs> no one's laughing. Just boom, 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 boom. <laughs> Comes back up. I'm too scared to have it <laughs> to, silence. <laughs> to silence. I hurt myself. Yeah. <laughs> Sit down on the stool. <laughs> you just, you hear it. Just a banging on the thing. <laughs> and they go, what, why did you do that? <laughs> Brian smoking okay. cigarettes during yeah. your set. I would just love it. Yeah, I think he tried to put his, the microphone <laughs> in his pocket. Did he just try to put it in his pocket? Uh, yeah. What would you say, Dusty? <laughs> I got nothing. I got, I got nothing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm afraid to have it too far away from me. Some uh, some guys will do that. I was taught yeah. early on. Somebody said never take it far away from your mouth. But if you watch like Jezelnik after mm-hmm. jokes, Jezelnik brings it down to his side, yeah. and it's really That's, interesting. Uh, yeah, I wish I could do like I even this weekend I was trying to because it's like trying to do or I think it was this weekend we tried to do new and old stuff, and uh, it's like you have a mix, and so some when I was doing the old stuff, I did think I was like let me try to. Uh, I know it seems like I go slow, but in my head I'm flying. Yeah, and I don't think I'm. I think I'm like weirdly like I can be. It's like slow, fast. Like I talk slow, but like the jokes are. There's a joke. You, I'm trying to make you laugh almost the whole time. Or, uh, but and then this weekend I tried to like I was like let me the old jokes that I you know have the rhythms of and I know. And I was like, maybe I'll try to like, like slow down my, I'm still trying to learn like to get more comfortable on stage. And, uh, cause I, I mean, I get very much in the, you, you don't, you're like comfortable in your thing. And if you get out of it, like Chappelle, like when you watch Chappelle, it is crazy. Uh, he can just like walk around, even the video of him bringing Elon on stage, which it came out. If you're watching, this was like a week before. Mm-hmm. And if something happened, I, I'm just seen, 
parts of this video. I don't know. They could have both killed someone this weekend <laughs> for all I know. And I don't want you to be like hearing this. <laughs> it's been a week later and you're like, you're talking about the guys that <laughs> blew up the city of San Francisco? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't. This is a week before. I don't know what they did. Uh, but even like I was just watching that, the comfortableness of like Chappelle just stands and just can just sit and quiet. Mm -hmm. and uh it's it's he's talking like you would be talking here i guess but it, it's i was like man not saying i want to do that but it's like i need to learn how to have some of that i think uh and so i was trying to do it this weekend like a little bit with some of the jokes but it's like the rhythm is already set so it's kind of hard to do it and then i feel like the laughs aren't what i want them to be like they weren't what I thought they are if I don't do that. And, you know, when you're doing a joke, you always find the timing and the rhythm. It's all, it's a rhythm is a, a very, very big thing in comedy. It's the, I mean, it's the most like it's how, I mean, the, the joke needs to be funny, but how the rhythm of how it's delivered is, yeah. is so important. Yeah. When a show's crushing and you're like able to just keep, I mean, it's like that you can really get into a rhythm. Like if I'm up at, up there and it's like, it's going okay. The rhythm is not the same as yeah. if it's just crushing and you're like, just able to just roll with it. And it is a fun rhythm. You can get out of sync with it. And sometimes you got to stop and be like, all right, let me, let me kind of reset. I need to get like, cause you're just trying to find, cause you can get the groove and be like, and that's why when you do, you do so many shows of the same. That's how long it takes to find the rhythm. And I still don't know if I know what I'm doing, but it's, I know I don't know what I'm doing. Like it, but it's like, you know what you're doing, but it's like, you just, it's, yeah, it's interesting to find, you get like, golly, how do I get that comfortable and, and, and be able to just, you know, be up there. Even if I was, if you could be up there, like, you know, people that talk to the crowd, like, even though, like, I'm not a giant crowd work fan, but it is, like, the tool of that is not a bad thing to know how. I don't think you should do it and rely on it and that be the thing, but having the tool of it's not bad mm -hmm. to be able to just be up there and have the pressure of, like, oh, I got to think of something to say to these people. Like, if you had to walk on stage and was like, well, you need to start talking about something, like, what would you – like, I, I think I would panic. I could, you know, I could kind of talk. Like, I, I would just, I, I would be like, I, I, I like to know where I'm going. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, unless there's a lot, like sometimes my show I do in Nashville, my, my opening set, I'll host that show. So I'll go up and sometimes I'll be like, I'm just going to mess around a little bit. Mm -hmm. And if that's going well, it's amazing. You're like, oh, this is awesome. But I have gone up and been like, I'm going to mess around a little bit. And no one laughs at any of the things I'm doing. And it can be a little panic where I'm like, oh, no, let's do some jokes. Yeah. <laughs> let's do some jokes we know. Yeah. Let's get the show on track here. Yeah. You don't want to lose it. Yeah. 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 I, I do think rhythm is a big thing. If you can figure out your rhythm and then you can, you know, and you, you do figure out over time. But it's, I don't know if you ever really just know it. It's just like being confident. Like Chappelle is just the most confident person up there. He's the most confident person in the room. And it's and it's even another level of confidence. And I and maybe that's even like a notoriety thing or a faint. Like you, you're like, you know, it's like you could uh, like even when I go up, even though if you're there and you know everybody knows you, you always feel like, why well, do they know me? Or like, you feel like every you're like, ah, they might be here for just because they're here. Yeah. I don't, you know, who am I to assume? But then if you're so famous, like maybe you do get a little, you know, you gain that. I don't know. Or maybe it's over time. Maybe it's years. Maybe it's something like anything. You don't, it's, it's, it, you got to be old to figure stuff out. It's mm -hmm. crazy. Yeah. Experience. Uh, Corey Crowley, my cousin visited with my aunt and uncle for Christmas and brought her dog. The dog apparently pooped behind the TV when everyone is gone. A week later, they were having problems with their cable and had to call Comcast. The cable guy got behind the TV, paused, and asked my uncle, do you have a dog? To which my uncle responded, no, we don't. The cable guy paused and then just got to work. I'm pretty <laughs> sure he thought my aunt and uncle enjoyed playing a friendly game of hide the turkey. Oh, jeez. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's, funny. That's a weird way to ask, too, though. Do you yeah. have a dog? Because yeah. your uncle's like, no, we don't have a dog. Like, but right. it's like, 
you don't go, well, there's some poop back here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah hey, now, Corey, I couldn't put it all in there. Corey pointed out how his uncle never once asked, why do you ask? He's yeah. just like, nope. And then that was it, yeah. which is also very funny yeah. that he didn't ask. I think, too, is like if you're the cable guy, you're just like, all right, they're saying no. Looks like dog poop. Maybe it's something else. If it is something else, do I want to be? Yeah. How long do I want to be? I better yeah. get to work and get out <laughs> like, of here. I can just I, let me just hammer this out and get out of this house. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you better hope to God it's from a dog. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Know? All right, that's best case All scenario. Right. Yeah. Uh, Mike Monaco, I live in Concord, New Hampshire, where Krista McAuliffe <clears throat> is buried. I was at a bar. Who's that? She's the challenger, the teacher that was oh, on the cha- yes. special challenge. Yes. Uh, I was at a bar and I saw a stack of dirty pennies by the register. I asked about them and the bartender said that a homeless guy came in for a drink and left the pennies as a tip, saying he had taken them off of Krista McAuliffe's tombstone. The bartender let me take the pennies, which I put back on the tombstone on my way home. I apologized to her grave that someone... Would take her pennies and wish her to rest in peace. Definitely the strangest drive home of my life. Yeah, that is weird. So why are people putting pennies on her grave? Uh, that's just something people do to... Like honor, a wishing well? Honor the dead. Oh, mm-hmm. not even a quarter, huh? Yeah. Be pretty funny if in some way she can't, but in some way she could see them and go, and then that homeless guy didn't take the pennies from yeah. the... She's like, why'd that guy just put all those pennies <laughs> on my grave? Yeah. Yeah, a lot of that. It is. Yeah, is that a thing to put pennies on a grave? I mean, I googled uh, Chris McAuliffe pennies on grave, and I read what people do do that. But I don't know if oh, it's... with her. I mean, I assume it's with other people mm-hmm. as well. Maybe she had a penny collection back in the day. Although the act of placing pennies and other coins on gravestones is still relatively new, humans have been leaving tributes at burial sites for millennia. Uh, so yeah, it's just this is a common thing apparently. We have nothing of value now, so we're like. Take a penny. <laughs> they probably used to make things back in the day. It was probably a real tribute. Now we're like, take a penny, give a here's penny. a penny, Krista. They're taking up room in my pocket here. Pennies penny. are used to simply say you visited the grave. A nickel can be used to say that you and the deceased trained at boot camp together. A dime can be used to say you serve with the deceased in some capacity. A quarter is you're communicating to the family that you were with the deceased when he or she was killed. So it's like a military thing. Yeah, so that's a military About a half dollar. tradition. A half dollar is like it's you. Oh, wow. You're and the But person. then it's like after <laughs> Memorial Day, all the coins that are left at the graves in national and state cemeteries are collected and applied towards maintaining the cemeteries and paying the burial cost of indigent mm. veterans. Uh, that's a really cool thing. Though. That is cool. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Not going to get a lot done with pennies, though. No. Well, if a lot of people. <laughs> well, it adds up. It's pennies it adds add up. up. We got another, because we just talked about Space Shuttle, because you'd watch that thing. Uh, another, it was too long to put in here, but I'll just tell you, John Bricado, who watches, said that they were trying to get more kids interested in the Space Shuttle, so they were working with Sesame Street to send one of the characters into outer space, and it was going to be Big Bird, mm. and it would have been on that Space Shuttle Challenger wow. flight, but Big Bird was too big to fit in the, cost, uh, not the costume, the astronaut gear, mm-hmm. so they didn't send him, but... Wow. Big Bird could have went down. If that would have happened, do you think they would have brought? They still would have brought Big Bird back on the show. I don't think so. I don't think you can. Like, because then it's like, uh, it's like you legendary. Should. Yeah, yeah. That you know. I mean, imagine you didn't do that, and what? what like he has to wear the Big Bird costume and then fly. Like, why wouldn't they send a smaller, like yeah. Oscar the Grouch or? Something? Well, it's like you want to go, and then why would you not just make a smaller Big Bird thing? And fit it in a regular like no one's gonna be like that doesn't look like the size of a big bird like it's it's all relative to, but I think the seeing. kids are gonna be like wow it's really big bird I know but you just make a smaller scale I if mean, you big, see them on there with the you, other astronauts you're gonna know what's up with big bird I think you bring the costume and then you put it on when you're in space <laughs> you don't have to fly yeah. out of the atmosphere in yeah. the costume yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's just Who the, knows if that's even true? But he goes, golly, Big Bird sweat. <laughs> He's like, what's wrong? With, you know, Big Bird seems crazy, and the whole flight is just—they're like all pinned back, and <laughs> you can't even see outer space because Big Bird's in front of you. Yeah, I mean, how tall is Big Bird? That's like nine question. feet tall? Yeah, he's pretty tall. 
How tall is Big Brand? That's a great question. He is about 98 inches, which uh, is. Why would they even do that? <laughs> <laughs> just don't. Just yeah, don't. Over eight feet tall. Yeah. Wow. How was that? <laughs> what? Like, what? what's the. <laughs> It's a person in the costume, right? Yeah. yeah. No, oh, he's real. No, no, no. Yeah, it's a bird. Well, it's not a puppet, like a full-on animatronic puppet is what I mean. No, I think right. a guy is in there. So what's he on stilts? Or does his head not go all the way up I to think the his top? head is probably underneath, you know, or it's real. If you're a kid watching this, no, Dusty doesn't know what he's talking about. I mean, Dusty would say <laughs> Big Bird... You can make him be on the moon, make him on Mars, make him on, you know. Well, it's absolutely, like, you can. It goes, <laughs> it goes I don't, why didn't they just do that and go, look, look, there he is. He's on the moon. Right. I mean, his studio is probably right next to that studio. Mm-hmm. So. I mean, why doesn't Big Bird just fly to the moon? That's right. Yeah. You know? Because he's a big bird. He's a dinosaur, too. Yeah. Is he? Birds. Oh, yeah. Uh, evolved. Yeah. <laughs> Heavily evolved, Big Bird is. Talks. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how you'd even have the equipment. I mean, the fact that they're like, ah, we can't put the stuff on them. And that energy just stopped there. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how you do it. I don't just think the, anybody- I mean, just the nightmare of like, if you're one of the astronauts and trying to float, and you're like, excuse me. <laughs> you know, he's just like, the big bird just stuck in the middle the whole time. He can't move. And you're like, I got to go to the bathroom. <laughs> and then you get a squeeze by this eight foot. You know, not normal person that can yeah. s- s- shrink up. Like, mm-hmm. it's just a like big belly. He's like our own real life Chewbacca here. <laughs> yeah. Did they give him a, a space suit? Was he going to have his own helmet and whatnot? Yeah, I just looked. I couldn't find couldn't find any. Because that might have been the problem. Any visualization. Like, well, we can't really. You're not going to be really able to breathe up there, mm-hmm. Big Bird. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He was on the short list <laughs> for a tall guy. Uh. Mm. It didn't apply to go on the space rod. Yeah, it was Carol Spinney, the man inside the eight foot two suit. So they reached out to him. Yeah. Hey, you want to go to space? <sighs> hey, he goes, I don't know. Oh, so he didn't go because the costume's sheer bulk and out of control, zero gravity environment was part of it. Mm, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it I mean, who even <laughs> called him then? Like, that was like. Like that's like an intern at NASA. <laughs> we're like, hey, it's like, wait, I can call Sesame Street and call you're NASA. You can call anybody you want to call. <laughs> Hello, Big Bird. There, <laughs> we're trying to make a very serious trip to the moon here. Yeah. Could we get a cartoon character on yeah. here with us? Get, <clears throat> yeah, it's Big Bird. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> Space. Yeah. All right, I'll do it. <laughs> oh, it looks like they're still doing it. I mean, it says Orion test capsule. They're sending. Sesame Street artifacts. Grover's cape, the rubber ducky Ernie sings with, and cookies Imagine from Imagine an Man. alien finding that and just be like, oh, mm-hmm. God, look at we're dealing Here with. Here is the Earth people trashing the moon again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Throwing stuff up there. They throw literally the trash can up there. And they, <laughs> and they go, <laughs> look, they killed an alien. He's in the trash can. Open the trash can. See that alien's inside there. <laughs> And he is fiery. Hmm. Ended Claire. I had a stunning experience when I was 12 or 13. My father had brought had bought some property in the Sierra foothills not far from Bass Lake and was planning to develop it. As we rounded the corner onto the property, there was what I later found out was a Bigfoot going through our garbage pile. I am pretty skeptical and pragmatic person, so I seldom tell people about my Bigfoot adventure unless I've known them for a long time. I do... Not want someone looking at me like I'm crazy, uh, like I'm a crazy flake, but I wanted to let Nate know that he is right. They do exist. See? Wow. Mm. See what I'm talking about, man? I believe it. Seems like it makes sense. Yeah, I mean, who knows what's out there? You know, sometimes they'll be like, they act like we've discovered everything. And then they'll be like, discovered a new species. And it's like, okay, so you haven't discovered everything. Yeah. Yeah. But still want to continue to... Live that lie yep. that we know what everything is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's down here, Bass Lake. I like it. Are there caves Thank around you, Bass Lake? Uh, probably. probably, probably more than likely. Uh, yeah, yeah. She said she. This was like sixty years ago. She called her sister recently and said, "We saw that, right?" And her sister was like, "Oh yeah, that really happened." Yeah, man. Yeah. I wonder what it. I mean, it was just digging through the trash, huh? She said it was limping. 
she thinks maybe he couldn't go out and kill like normal Bigfoots because oh, it was yeah. injured. So got to oh, go through some right. trash. So it's got to have crutches. <laughs> One of those little carts that you push goes, Come on now, get on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, oh, I'm hurt. They talk, you know. I love it. Patricia O'Toole. Hello, folks. Long time caller, first time listener. <laughs> Canadian folk here. It seems Wendy's, it seems Wendy's in Canada is doing a campaign promoting cold ketchup, saying, For those who like their ketchup cold, ask for Heinz cold ketchup. This just proves they is. In fact, correct. Restaurants serve room temperature ketchup. I'll see you at a New Year's show in Toronto, Nate. Oh, that'll be fun. Uh, yep. There you go. Turn I know that you guys have already done an episode on this, so I'm just going to ask. But it's like, isn't the way to get cold ketchup just to put it in the refrigerator? Mm-hmm. Like, you don't really need a special kind of cold ketchup. Well, I think they're saying they're like you can ask, and yeah, I don't. I there's. I don't think it's different ketchup, but they're just like, we'll keep this one oh, in the refrigerator. Okay. okay. It's the same ketchup. Oh, now this colder. Is now colder. Yeah. Same ketchup, now colder. Because some people are like, oh, I like that. You might be in the mood for cold ketchup. I like, I always like cold ketchup. Mm-hmm. Does ox mean with AUX? With tomatoes. Is that French? It's a type of tomatoes, isn't it? Let's look that up. In Canada, yeah, everything has to be in English and French. Oh, so my beans. Oh, tomato. there you go. <laughs> C. Odge. <laughs> if you look up ox, and then it says C. Odge. Well, I don't want to look up Odge. Yeah. I wanted to stop at ox. Internet's yeah. lagging. Right. That's right. fine. We'll never know. We'll yeah, because they're like a you know a, what a, a bilingual country, so everything has to be in English and French. Mm. You're gonna do your show in both. Yep. First half French, second half English. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Figured I'd open with French. <laughs> Douglas Robinson, of all the misinformation on the show, I finally reached my tipping point. The Astros <laughs> never wore buzzers, according to the official MLB investigation. That was a theory floated by the Twitter username John Boy, who got duped by someone claiming to be Carlo Carlos Beltran's niece. Beltron, remember, being the guy who came from the Yankee organization, saw how little the Astros were cheating, can compare, were cheating compared to where he had just been, and showed them how to cheat. Mm-hmm. All right, Doug. oh wow. Well, I'm the one that made that accusation, so I'm right. sorry if that's not true. Mm. But I always, yeah, Jose so Otuve. A, there's a scene where he's condescending, coming in home plate, and everyone's greeting him, and he like covers up, almost like don't. Touch it. Do you know what I'm talking yeah, about? I remember yeah. that, that clip for sure. There's also video evidence of them hitting trash cans, and you can hear it. Is there? Yeah. <clears throat> John Boy's the guy who I love. John Boy. He makes these great breakdowns of all things that happen in sports. They're yeah. unbelievable. Well, he went through and made a video compilation of Astros at bat, and you hear hear the trash can being hit. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy. They flat out cheated. It's okay. It's okay. Every you know, every organization has problems. I'm well, sorry, he's saying Carlos Beltran learned it because they weren't doing enough. The Yankees were doing even more. Well, show me the evidence that the Yankees were hitting trash cans in the dugout. I know, but if they're cheating in another way. Well, they haven't been caught. Yeah. Actually, uh, this big thing just came out about the – did you see the thing that came out about the different balls in the major leagues? Uh-uh. The conspiracy theory about that? Mm-hmm. You'll like this, Dusty. I can't wait. Oh, <laughs> mm-hmm. they have they're – Two different balls in circulation, two different kinds of balls in Major League Baseball this year. But there was a third kind that almost exclusively was being used at Yankees games that allowed it to be hit farther. Wow. And this is the year Aaron Judge almost broke the home run record. Oh, man. So the allegation being the Major League Baseball had an incentive for this record to be broken. It's going to drive viewers. It's going to get headlines. So they injected these juiced balls into only Yankees games. Wow. Uh, he did break it. He broke I mean, the American League record. He didn't hit 70, 74. Yeah, he, he broke. 62. But he yeah. broke the record that everybody's like, oh, he broke the But if he, well, they only started, they shifted the goalposts when they're like, he's not going to hit 74. So let's have, he'll break the American League record. And it's the clean record. It's yeah, the that's what I mean. That's uh-huh. what I mean. Okay. Like it's yeah. the record that people could argue that's the only record that, might, you know. And he still got cheated, I feel like. Because when Mark McGuire did it, the whole country was watching, and but he cheated. But now this time, people barely even 
knew about it. Well, that don't cheat. That's what happens. Is I know. I just feel bad for him. Yeah, yeah. No, it would have been an enormous story. I think baseball's really fallen off since the Mark McGuire days. Too. Oh, yeah. I mean, people aren't watching it like they were back then. I was excited. They would cut in, and I was like, I liked seeing it, mm -hmm. him going for it, and it was kind of fun. But it was, you got so much going on now. But then also, they, you know, they kind of messed it up. It was like when McGuire and Sosa was doing it, it was so crazy. And then when Bonds did it, I remember they went in, they would cut into Bonds, but then everybody's kind of like, all right. But he was going after 74. I think if if Aaron Judge went after the 74, like whatever, if he was if he was breaking Bonds, I think the whole world's tuned into that. Oh, I do too. Yeah. But it's it's it also just doesn't they would have tuned into this, but it's like, I mean, no one, you know. Uh, yeah, it was actually annoying to me. I'd be watching a game, football game, and then they're like cutting to a, a small screen <laughs> to watch the baseball thing. I'm like, well, I'm, I'm watching the thing I want to be watching. Mm -hmm. You're watching wow. some red zone. Yeah, I don't need to be cut in. I like cut. I mean, I, it's a big thing. So, uh, but it makes it fun. You're like, ooh, <laughs> I don't got to do anything. It's like I just trust. I'm going to see only when he bats. Yeah. You know, but I'm sure you want to see those second and third down. <laughs> uh, you see two runs and a punt. You're like, oh, God, what's Aaron doing? Yeah. History's being made yeah. over on Fox. <laughs> just, yeah. Just annoyed that you're like, oh, gosh. Trying to was... watch Alabama Citadel right yeah. now. Yeah. <laughs> it goes, well, what did he do? Did he run it or did he – he ran – he's poor punting. Okay. Uh, Adria Lanonides. Uh, how did Aaron and Lucy end up together? I know he's never told that story, and I'm so curious to hear how they started dating. Was it a local club she works at, or did he meet her while on the road? Mm, she works at a local club. We met at an open mic here in Nashville, mm. and then uh, just started dating after that. Not really that crazy of a story. Comedy is a pretty small world, industry included, so you just, you're around each other a lot. All right. Sounds know? like you love her. <laughs> and... <laughs> Now, is it true you it's weren't? Like, I said the same story. I was talking about. I met my <laughs> mechanic. Yeah, <and> go, <laughs> yeah, mechanic down the road. First easy one to go to. Everybody went to it. Married it. Small now world. I live that mechanic. Small world. <laughs> Not a great story. Not a great story. Not a big deal. I mean, how'd you want me to tell that? No, that's it. You told him. Yeah. Was it true though that? You weren't interested at first, and then she got a job at Zanies. And <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All of a sudden, you saw her qualities. Yeah. <laughs> now she was working at Zanies before I even started doing stand up. Mm. Right. Yeah. It's beautiful. <laughs> uh, it's a fairy tale. Becca Gee. Nate was saying for an opener not to do crowd work. Wait, Nate was saying for an opener not to do crowd work. Is there a reason not to do crowd work? Does it just get out of hand and do y'all not like it? Also, Dusty has been a great addition to the pod, even though I wasn't sure about him at first. <laughs> There's a, a trend lot, going, a lot of that going on. Converting yeah. people, yeah. man. Well, I'm happy they're being converted. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a lot of others the other way that yeah, I don't like, want to put it in because I'm too like, condescending. They liked him at yeah. first, yeah. but uh, now I don't. gone too yeah. far. Uh, no, I mean, like this weekend, Julian McCullough comes out with me. He always does some crowd work uh, up top, and it does good. Uh I don't mind it completely, but it's like if you're when you're doing the whole if the whole show is like doing crowd work, it's because then you got prepared material, and sometimes it's more of a you don't always want to follow like it, it depends a who's doing the crowd work, and then uh, if you have to follow it, if the crowd doesn't know who you are, then it's hard to sometimes because then you get them excited, you get them like you know the crowd's like yelling, and you get them all talking, and you just kind of set the mood to be like. Oh, is this what it's going to be all night? It's like we just get to yell back and all this stuff, and then you're like, "Well, I'm just trying to tell jokes," and then you're like, "Well, I got to maybe possibly deal with a rowdy crowd because mm -hmm. now you've kind of like the tone has been set to." Yeah, you don't want to get the audience used to being involved in the show. Yeah, if you're not going to be doing crowd work, yeah. like I hate crowd. Like if somebody does a joke or two, that's fine, but I hate. If somebody does a bunch of crowd stuff, because I'm like, oh, now the audience is geared up differently. Mm -hmm. I want them to just sit there, listen to my jokes, and laugh along. If they yell something yeah. once in a while, I don't care, but I don't want them to be geared up for mm -hmm. it. If I'm opening for you, would you rather me do 20 minutes of crowd work or 20 minutes of songs on a guitar? 
Oh, gosh, that's not, they, we would probably only work together the one time. <laughs> yeah. So uh, you would say you would say do whatever you want. Yeah. You'd never yeah. Work with me again. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know. That's a tough call, but yeah. probably the crowd work. Crowd work while playing guitar. Yeah. Some guys do that. Yeah. 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 That's the main reason. Is it, it kind of depends on the act, and then uh, you know, if a headliner does crowd work, then he definitely doesn't want the person to talk to the crowd because you don't want to go up there if if you're if you're got to do 45 minutes or an hour you don't want to be like so you've talked to everybody like right they want to talk to people we already talked about who's married yeah. and you know all that stuff. Yeah, yeah yeah so uh but i'm yeah I, I i i just do my act and so uh like i said but it's not it's a good tool to have to uh be able to know how to do that but i i think I think if you're a comic, I think your best bet is to you, – you're going to have to have an act. Uh, Stuart Elder. My wife and I are excited that Nate will be in London. We bought tickets for the show. And we'll be flying up from Glasgow, especially for this. Should we hold off from watching the special? Will it be the same show? If so, we would rather wait to see it live for the first time. Uh, so when I come out to London, uh, that's in March, I think. So special in January. I mean, so the beef, you know, people ask a lot about this, the, the tour names and stuff like that too, like the rain check tour. So the special is, uh, the special is, is going to be the rain check, what I did on the rain check tour. But I mean, it, you know, depending on when you saw it and where you saw it, it could be some stuff, not in it, some stuff that's been put in it. Uh, you know, it, it changes like, so tour name it's, is like the be funny tour is to be like, all right, the rain check one is over. Uh, right now, if you see me even right now, like this way I'm doing, it's like, it's a kind of a mix of what will be on the special and what will, and then new stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh, but in comedy, it's like, when I get to the be funny tour, the plan is to be, your hope is to, I, I, I want to have to be turned over and have completely new material and wouldn't be doing anything from that. But you know, it could maybe when the special is, I would think. Uh, the I would by then it would be I need to, you can come to the show you can watch the special and you come to the show I would tell anybody you can watch the special and you come to the show right now I already have I can do roughly thirty minutes that's that's new and then uh, so I'm hoping but the special doesn't air for uh, another month and a half, yeah like a month and a half so once it comes out like you know I mean worst case it's like right when it comes out maybe I'll have to do a couple jokes from that special uh maybe i'll have all new i'll have to see but it's 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 not as like like i know mu music is the it's it's like they what they release an album right and it's like we're touring with this album mm -hmm. and so you're going to go watch this album comedy is kind of the opposite is you tour with the material the special comes out and then the next tour is new material because we ours is built off surprise obviously so uh it's so you're the the be funny tour which starts in jane Starts in January, and the tours just almost never feel like they stop. Like they kind of came together, but it's uh, so the be funny tour is like, well, I'll be. I, I I think if you go, yeah, I mean comedy, it's just it depends on when they catch you. But like if someone saw me, I went to uh, Mobile, Alabama, at the beginning of the rain check tour and the end of the rain check tour, and I would say they were they had to be pretty different. Yeah, and that was technically the same tour mm -hmm. uh but it's by then it would change comedy kind of changes like that now if you see me there's a long stretch where i am you're seeing some of the main jokes and some of the some stuff but there's a lot of people that come to multiple shows on a tour and like there's a little stuff that changes but when you're about to get up to the special you're kind of like yeah we're loaded locked and loaded yeah, like yeah. uh but yeah i should be I'm kind of new material now, so it's... Uh, well, you can do 30 minutes of new material, and then you can do four or five minutes of crowd work just yeah. to fill the, fill the That's time. That's true. With a guitar. Maybe a crowd with a guitar. That'd help. <laughs> uh, but, yeah. And we have... And look, when it come out, too, we have, like, Bridgestone's going to... Uh, is us three, uh, and my dad will be on that show. So, And then, like, I usually have two comics on a show uh, when I come out, and so people always... When you see uh, see that, you know, I want you to see some of these comics. I like the idea of building this. It's the world that this Nate Lane world that we're building. Uh, hello world. Hello world. It's kind of like, you know, it's, I don't, there's, you know, I know kids come to these shows. It's, I, I it's, 
you know, it's not like we're doing comedy for kids. It's, but it's, you know, you want to be, you'd be able to come and see some of these other comics and, uh, you know, with me, there'd be, with me, if they're on my show or if I do this special, they'll be clean. Uh, I can't always promise it's going to be like that if they do their own. I don't know, but it's like, you know, it's like, I, you're just trying to introduce a lot of comedy to uh, a lot of people that I think some are nervous to watch it because if they feel stuff's too dirty or if you don't watch stuff with your family, like you want to be able to, everybody can, the idea of it is everybody can do it. Is it going to be for everybody? Is everything going to work out perfectly? I know, but it's the, the, the idea is there. Hello world. Hello world. <laughs> <laughs> Aggressive. Aggressively. Hello Newman. Uh, so yeah, there we go. All right. Hey, this product is a product we've started using every day. We started taking athletic greens because none of us eat very well, right? I mean, I mean, you know what I mean? But we're all looking for simple ways to try and be more healthy. And this is a great start to the morning. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, and aging. That's a lot of things. The taste is great. And it's easy to make and drink quickly. One scoop of powder with water. Shake and drink or stir, whatever you want to do. The travel packs are great for when any of us are on the road. You can easily pour into a bottle of water. Contains less than one gram of sugar, no GMOs, no nasty chemicals or artificial anything. Supports better sleep quality and recovery and also mental clarity and alertness. It's cheaper than getting all the different supplements yourself. And it costs less than $3 a day. Mm. Just three little old dollars. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and help your immune system with convenient daily nutrition, especially heading into the flu and cold season. It's just one scoop, one scoop and a cup of water every day. That is it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy... Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash Nate. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash Nate to take ownership over your health mm -hmm. and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. There you go. And uh, if people just listening uh, – Dusty did hold up quotation marks around flu and cold season. <laughs> uh, I just know everybody can't see. So he goes, uh, during flu and cold season. Yeah, you know what I mean, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Do you ever go to the doctor, Dusty? Well, see, I a vet. He's going to cure a, a chicken, a frog, a turtle, all in the same day. That's yeah. right. Well, you know, I got, you know, I always have some digestive stuff going on. So I've been trying to get that worked out, but mm -hmm. I feel good. I saw a holistic doctor recently and uh, I feel good about what we've been doing. If you've hung around me outside of this podcast, you know that I burp like a million times. Yeah. And um, so I'm trying to get that fixed. And yeah. that's a real gut issue. Some people say I have leaky gut. And uh, mm. and a leaky gut is where you have like you, your uh, your your gut lining is just developed uh, like holes, I guess. Uh, so when you eat, it just golly. drips right into your body. And then so if you take a food allergy test, whatever you've been eating, it's going to say you're allergic to because yeah. that's in your bloodstream. Mm. So I got to get that healed up. But I've been doing some stuff, and it feels good. I'm only burping about a thousand times a day now, as opposed to a million. So that's yeah, pretty good. That's pretty good. I just went for cool. my uh, one year stroke checkup. Ooh. Oh, that was a year ago? Yeah. On my birthday. Remember, yeah. it was the oh, same time yeah. I announced I'm having oh. a baby. Oh, right. Yeah. Right. I didn't have a stroke, but, oh, I okay. but I thought I might be. You talked to me about some stuff, yeah. but I didn't he know. He looked yeah. like yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He looked like he yeah. was. Yeah. Um, but I guess there's staffing shortages everywhere. I've been to a restaurant before where they'll call your name and then they'll go ahead and call another person's name and take you both to your tables. I was at the doctor. It was this is at a hospital, and the lady calls me. I walk up there. She comes out, date of birth. I give her my date of birth. Then she calls another name, and another guy comes up. She asks him his date of birth, and she's like, "All right, both of y'all come on back." So now we're walking together down this long hallway. It's very awkward. Mm -hmm. Two people in there for something. He's chatting her up. He's making her laugh. I immediately think, "Does she like him better than me?" All this stuff is going through my head. Then we get to where they do the vitals. She's like, "All right, which one of you wants to step up here first? And weighs us together. 
And that's then I, crazy. I mean, isn't that crazy? Yeah. yeah. Or am I wrong about that? I mean, yeah. it's funny that he's the charming guy, but you just sit there yeah. quiet. Like, what do you do, Brian? I know. I'm a comedian. I know. Yeah. I know. I'm going to inherit the earth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very meek. But, well, I mean, that's what they do—the meek until you get the earth. Mm-hmm. And then they go you crazy. Go online. No, you got to go and get checked up with other people. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Because we're so meek. Yeah. yeah. We don't speak up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're did, right. And did y'all separate after that? Yeah, we separate after that, but it was just very weird. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, mm. all right. Yeah. Did you ask him what he was in for? No, but I mean, I think we're both looking at each other like, what's this guy's problem? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Trying to one up each other to get service first. Or, That's what I would do. You start limping. <laughs> you didn't go. So you had a stroke? <laughs> I guess you had a stroke then, huh? Because that's what I had. Yeah. yeah. No. But you didn't have a stroke. No. What did they say? I mean, not to just get into your personal health information. They can't you know. find anything. That's good. Yeah. I'm a per- that's what perfect you want. specimen. That's what you want. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So this is, is the end of the year. Last episode of the year, we decided to do uh, stuff we didn't get to in 2022. Oh. So as we wrap up, you know, usually Nate said, are we good? And I said, yeah. But sometimes I got some leftover stuff. It's pretty amazing. This is the stuff I did not find worthy Uh, to get to based (laughs) on what we talk about on this podcast. Um, So the first one I want to throw out was just from a couple weeks ago, World War II. So World War II ended in 1945 when Japan surrendered to the United States, ending the war. There was a Japanese officer positioned in the Philippines did not know the war ended, or he didn't believe the war ended. He stayed hidden, still on his post for 29 years after World War II ended. He didn't. He didn't step down till 1974. I, I so I've been to this place. Oh, uh, he was in. Uh, uh, was it Guam? It was the Philippines. Uh, is that the same? <laughs> There might have been another guy in Guam. There's more than one guy that this happened to. But. Oh, maybe the one. Yeah, the one. Maybe one I thought. The one I thought in Guam, like I think, was even crazier than that. Wait, yeah. so nobody even in the Philippines was like, "Hey, dude, the war's over." No, they tried to tell him. They would drop flyers from the sky, leaflets, but they didn't. He didn't believe it. He thought it was a trick, misinformation, to try yeah. to get him come out. Perfect. So at first, he and his other soldiers hid out in the jungle, and then after a while, those guys gave up or whatever. This guy kept going and. Hiding, and I think he killed some people. Wow, doing some guerrilla warfare, and then the the story about how he's found is pretty equally crazy. There's this Japanese explorer, and he said, "I want to go find three things: this guy Hiro Onado, a panda in the wild, and uh, a bottomless snowman." And he said, "I'm going to start with this guy." After four days of getting there, he finds him. This explorer. Takes pictures with him, becomes friends with him, becomes buddies. And then he goes back to Japan and shows them, like, look, the guy's still there. He's he's really there. Because they'd heard rumors, didn't know if it was real or yeah. not. And then Japan's like, well, we got to do something. So his superior officer goes to the Philippines and finds him and tells him, you got to relieve yourself of a duty. Yeah. And he turns in a sword. What about uh, the murders he committed? Well. Thinking he was still on post. Wow. I mean, who yeah. was active he? war, man. But yeah. it wasn't though. Yeah, but he thought it was. Right, yeah. but, right. But I yeah. mean, is there, is there any? It's compens- a tough. That's a tough one. Compensation for those people's families. That's a tough one. Second question: What about the panda or the abominable snowman? All right. So then he finds him. So then he goes finds a panda, panda of the wild. Then he goes to the Himalayas. Says he sees a yeti from a distance. Mm-hmm. 1975. Um, couldn't get to it. He got married later that year, so his wife made him take some time off. Um, but then he goes back and in 19, like 10 years later, he gets killed in an avalanche in the Himalayas mm. looking for the abominable snowman. So people really believe there's an abominable snowman. I think it's the same as like Bigfoot. Oh, he's like the, their version. Like the yeah. snow version. Yeah. Snow version. I feel like maybe Bigfoot's got a little bit more <laughs> believability even than the abominable snowman. Why is that? Well, because of, uh, Rudolph. You think Rudolph? Small, yeah, uh, bottom of someone's in Rudolph. So yeah, yeah. it's like uh, Bigfoot, you know. But I mean, I would imagine it's just the same thing. Yeti's a great name, though. Mm-hmm. Like if you, I would believe, people would believe in a Yeti more than they would if you referred to it as a bonimal. What does a bonimal mean? Abominable, abominable, inestimable. <laughs> yeah, 
I believe abominable snowman more than Bigfoot. Really? Because, you know, if, if they can survive. <laughs> Unequivocally. <laughs> this definition is yeah. unequivocally detestable. Loathsome. Loathsome. It just means bad. So, like, this yeah, is a snowman maybe. they hate. Yeah. So, I think, you know, you just up in the snowy mountains, like, especially if you have the ability to sustain really cold temp- temperatures, then you, you're you not going to be able to, people aren't going to be able to discover you as easy as, you know, say, Bigfoot in, you know, just the regular oh. jungle. Sorry. Yeah, but, so you mean, uh, but, I mean, I would think, so you're saying, like, he would be harder to find. That's what I think. Yeah. What I think is happening, and this is based on something I heard a long time ago, and I've never looked into it, but I think that when you're, <laughs> really high altitude and you get oxygen deprivation, you start to hallucinate. Mm -hmm. And a lot of hikers who lose oxygen, they'll hallucinate something resembling what we think of as, as Yeti. Yeah. I think that has to be where, where it comes from, you know? Yeah. I mean, could be, I mean, that could be it too, but Mm -hmm. I just think that if, if, you know, and, and maybe Bigfoot's not real either. I don't know, but I'm just saying if, I don't know, I could believe it. Yeah. I could believe it too. Yeah. All right. Yeah, he Bumble Snowman has more mountains, but Bigfoot has more trees to hide in. More. Yeah. Yeah, he's got to blend in in the snow. He's got the mountains and the snow, but no one's going up there. So that's the big thing. But think the about Bumble Snowman is like he's just he's up there and I mean, were there any animals that live up that like after a certain point no. But... We were looking when we went hiking, like how high can a grizzly bear? We looked that up. Like a bear can go Well, rams and mountain lions, they can get yeah, way on up there, can't they? Yeah, we're, so, I'm thinking like the man in uh, like the well, when they walk Himalayan on, mountains, yeah, uh, where when nothing, you see those things walk on on the side of a mountain, you're like, be careful. Oh yeah, <laughs> like how do you even? How could you even be a parent of a ram without just like every day being like, oh, oh. like is there not one of them that's not afraid of heights? That's just like I don't, I'm gonna hang back, dude. Like what is on that side of the mountain? I don't know. I don't know what they're grabbing onto. Yeah, what is what is? I mean, they they run. And they're just hopping around up there, and you're like, "Why? What's wrong with the ground? Why are they on the side of a mountain?" I think they get up there and eat. I don't know. They just get up there and eat plants. And do they not know that there's more plants behind them on flat ground? <laughs> you know, like, even regular goats love to get up on rocks. Yeah. Like my. Is it a protection thing? My like, nephew has maybe? a couple of goats, and they love to get up on the rocks. I think you can probably yeah you can avoid. Uh... Some predators, predators yeah. when you're on the side of a mountain like that. I mean, you it's like, like this one doesn't even look real. This looks like they're laying down and the picture's inverted. That's how steep that is, this mountain that they're on. It looks like it's flat. They're just chilling. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know how they even last. How could you you know you they I mean you would think they just would be falling every day. Every day they would be falling. Yeah, I watched a little nature documentary where they, they do fall sometimes. See how it says they don't fall, because it's I don't. It doesn't make sense that they're just. So they have a lot of th- yeah. They're agile. Their hooves are designed for climbing. They have slim bodies. Uh, oh, it, it, it says the main reason they fall is when they fight each other on the side of the mountain. I mean, they <sighs> can't even mi- not do that. <laughs> yeah. You can't even get to flat ground. He goes, "Let's do it up there. Let's do it at the top." <laughs> he goes, "No, no, 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 no. You, you gotta run your mouth. You gotta run your mouth where you run your mouth." <laughs> and I'm gonna fight you right here. He goes, "It doesn't logically. This is stupid. <laughs> One of us will fall." It says it is not common for them to fall, uh, but most mountain goats do survive the tumble. Uh, very young kids might also slip and fall due to their climbing. He's looking, experience. looking for the goats. No, kids are, <laughs> there's a five-year-old boy up there you're like well what is he doing up there he's trying to fight yeah <laughs> yeah it's it's yeah i mean it's crazy all right this is from the since we're talking about that animal attacks episode mm-hmm. it's a favorite so in 1985 this is another crazy story in knoxville they uh a guy found a body in his driveway it was strapped to a parachute, and the guy had like fifteen million dollars of cocaine on him, um, a gun, all this kind of crazy stuff. The guy ended up he it was a pilot from Lexington, Kentucky that was flying um, 
drugs for the cartel from Colombia. He was a former uh, officer in the military, knew how to fly. He was flying back and forth. He had to dump some of his load in the woods, and then he was going to, I guess, let his plane crash and jump out and land and get the stuff. But he, his parachute got tangled up. He fell to his death in Knoxville. Mm. So now they're like, well, now we got to find the cocaine that he dropped. And they did some searching, and they found a black bear, found the cocaine, tore it to pieces, ingested the cocaine. And that became Cocaine Bear. Wow. Which, which they're making a movie about. It comes out next month. Oh, yeah. I thought it was already out. Like, comes out in February. Or so it comes out in a couple of months. Wow, it's being talked about. It seems like a real jam. It's got quite a buzz. I can hear a lot of yeah. classic rock as the soundtrack. <laughs> <laughs> Eric Clapton. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I thought like, I thought I read some of this is, uh, yeah, the cocaine bear is going to be... Uh, I don't think it was as crazy as it's wearing sunglasses. Well, in the movie, Cocaine Bear goes on a killing spree. In real life, he just overdosed and they found him dead. His uh, they stuffed him. And it's now <laughs> they don't know how to. It's now on display at the Kentucky for Kentucky Fun Mall in Lexington, Kentucky, which will be at February third. So, oh yeah, we'll go check that we'll out. Check out check the Fun Mall. Out. Oh, y'all will be there. Yeah. Oh, so you can go see this bear. Yep. Yeah. Wow. They nicknamed him Pablo Escobar. And he's on display. There he is, right there. <laughs> and they put a little Kentucky really hat need on. to humiliate the body. After I can't believe they don't have sunglasses on the guy, though. Yeah. Now he circulated for a while. Um, after he was stuffed, he got somehow made it out to Vegas. He made it to a pawn shop. Then Waylon Jennings bought him from a pawn store. All right. <laughs> and just had him on display for a while. Yeah. Cocaine. From what bear. I know about Waylon Jennings, he was probably trying to cut that bear open and see what's in there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it's made the rounds. Like Waylon Jennings, Jennings owned him for a while, but eventually got back to Lexington, Kentucky, and now it's on display at this mall, fun mall. Uh, we got to go see that. <laughs> Pablo Escobar. Bear. That's fun. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. Hey, bear. <laughs> hey, bear. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this was Ray Liotta's last movie. Yeah. Yep. So that's why. So that's that also why cool. it was. Good cast, too. Directed by Elizabeth Banks. So, based on out. true events. Who's that's Elizabeth yeah. Banks? Inspired by true events. You recognize her. She was in a bunch of comedies. Mm-hmm. I mean, it looked like her early 2000s. Yeah. yeah, that's a bad picture ever. But. Is it like a horror movie or is it? It says it's a black comedy. I think it's like Snakes on a Plane. It's just yeah. to be over the top. Yeah. Silly. All right. Would you see it? Uh, Maybe, yeah. 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 All right. All right. This is from the Aliens Part 2 episode. Mm-hmm. It's a very popular one. So there's a guy who wrote a book, Eric Von Denken. He wrote a controversial book called Chariots of the Gods, and it's about UFOs in the Bible. Now, Moses was led in the wilderness when he was wandering the wilderness. He was led by uh, a pillar of fire by night and a pillar of cloud by day. And this guy theorizes that that was actually a UFO and that the Ark of the Covenant, was they were communicating back and forth that way. Yeah, I don't think I wrapped my head around Moses. No, I disagree. But uh, oh. I just, well, you know, this guy, he's saying that the, you know, this is God giving Moses a light and he's saying that that's, I guess, I mean, UFO is unidentified flying object. So anything could be that. Yeah. But, you know, if he's saying it's an alien, I got to go ahead and disagree. Well, except that I don't think that aliens are real, that it's probably uh, some type of angelic form. So maybe. It says this book includes remarkable photos that document mankind's first contact with aliens at the dawn of civilization. Yeah, so I mean, like, if if people read, like, the book of Enoch, that's, you know, it's not in the Bible, but some people say it's, like, you know, written by Enoch, who was in the Bible. He talks about, you know, basically angels, but but bad angels, angels who have defied God coming to Earth and, like, corrupting mankind. And if you were living on Earth— that could seem like aliens. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I get mm-hmm. that. Well, there was another theory. I don't know if it was in that book or not, that when Moses part of the Red, Red Sea, it was the exhaust pipes from the spaceship that would that blew it open. Oh, yeah. And then they part, they cross, and then the spaceship took off, so the exhaust pipe, water comes back down, 
kills the Egyptians. I'm guessing you're not buying that either. Nah, I mean, I don't take the credit away from God to give it to aliens. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm not into that. <clears throat> Tell you what, the Egyptians, I mean, why do you follow that? That's true. Like, how do you, the, the seas parted and you go, I think we'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, we'll make it all right. the way across. Yeah, I mean, it's like a wobbly bridge and you're like, well, that guy's basically at the other side of it. Yeah. So you're like, I don't know if I'm going to go. Like, you, you know, you kind of go, what well, stops here? Mm -hmm. Especially after your own country has been so devastated already. Yeah. By plague. That right. so much that you are like, let these people out of here. Get them out of here. Do you think if you were one of the Israelites, but one of the slow ones, and you're trying to cross, and the Egyptians are coming behind you, and God's like, come on, dude. <laughs> Pick it up yeah. or they're going to catch you. <laughs> yeah. Go, go, well, go, go. I think God was like that a lot with the Israelites in the desert at that time. I mean, he was always, they were always complaining and he was always having to do, like, at one point, I think he killed a bunch of them. I mean, but in this case, you think he was like, you're too slow. I got to let this water go. Or they're gonna <laughs> yeah, get yeah. You got 40 years to get in shape. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Speed it up. Yeah. You think, where do you think you would have ended up? I think I'd be at the bottom of the Red Sea. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He goes, give me time. I'm coming. <laughs> I think they would have just called me and put me back into slavery. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just finished out with the Egyptians. Well, I think that's what some of them wanted. They were like, oh, you took us out of Egypt and brought us into the desert. At least we had food in Egypt. Yeah. That's what a lot of them were saying. But if, they're, if you're an Egyptian too, I would have probably been like, I'm going to go. Y'all go. I'm going to be right. I'm coming. Mm -hmm. And I would let them go and be like, we ain't going to make it. How far is the Red Sea? Pretty far. Yeah. I get, yeah. But maybe even those Egyptians were like, listen, if we don't get these guys, then we're going to be the ones making the bricks. And so let's risk it because yeah. I don't want to be making bricks. I'd let's carry a boat just, <laughs> yeah, just to be just, safe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just to be safe. I think some of us should carry a boat. <laughs> <laughs> or somebody just go around just in case you got one guy with scuba gear on and he goes what are you doing he goes eh, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. hedging my bets <laughs> yeah <laughs> you never know mm. all right this is from the missouri episode with greg warren we didn't get into a lot of missouri facts because we started talking about high school wrestling and college yeah. wrestling stuff like that so the gateway arch in st louis it's the tallest man-made national monument in the U.S., 630 feet tall. How wide would you say it is? Uh, I've been in it. Uh, it's not wide. At the top? Uh, well, it's, it's wider it's, than at I its thought. Widest, at its widest point. 30 feet. Yeah. And it's yeah. wide, like from base to base? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, 100, 200 feet. Yeah, I, would, yeah, I could say 30 or something. 20, uh, I'll say 47. I think we're answering two different questions. 47? I'll, yeah. I'm talking about how wide, like, this way. Oh, not, see, I think not, you're talking, talking about the, arch from arch to arch. Oh, oh okay. You're yo, from arch so, to yeah, arch. so more than 30 feet. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, because I've been in the top of that. And it's not wide. Uh, arch to arch, I would say. 630 feet high. Yeah. So I'm saying, yeah. I'm oh, going 100, 100 yards. 400, 400 feet. I'm going a little 100 over 100 yards. yards. Uh, a little over 100 yards. I would say more than 100 yards. Ooh. And I'll say, uh, what is uh, 300 yards? 900, 900 feet? feet. 900 feet. Dusty, do you have a guess? I'm saying 100 yards. It's uh, 630 feet. It's the same. Oh, I almost said that. <laughs> God, I almost said that. <laughs> yeah. It's the same as what? It's the same width as it is height. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. Wow. It's an optical illusion that makes it look taller than it is wide, but... It's the yeah, same. I almost, I was going to say it's got to, it's the same. Dad, come it. My friend that does comedy in St. Louis says every new comic always goes, when are they going to finish that McDonald's? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, Wish yeah, I had thought of that. I was just there. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty funny, man. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> yeah. I, did a, I did a roast of St. Louis once and I said, it looks like St. Louis is, as a city is getting handcuffed. Oh, okay. Oh, pretty yeah. good. Oh, yeah. That's not bad. I set it up with some. Some crime statistics. You know, I mean, really, you really painted a picture. Crime stats yeah. to get it started. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> St. Louis. <laughs> Hello, St. Louis. <laughs> it's from the Missouri Bureau of Investigations. Yeah. The latest stats. Oh, yeah. 
All right, Conspiracy Theories episode, which was our most viewed episode of uh, 2022. Really? Oh, wow. Really? Yeah. Look at that. This isn't so much a conspiracy theory, but I had it on the list, and it's kind of funny. I thought I'd talk about it. So Terrence Howard, the actor. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He apparently has given up acting. He's come up with his own, he calls it teriology, and it's his own math equation. He says one times one is not one. He says it's actually two, and he's come up with a math equation to explain why this is. And he's come up with a lot of other equations that he's figured out, like why are bubbles always round? There are no straight lines. Um, but he's kind of given up on acting and become this physics. Does he have a physics. background in this stuff? Or is he this- went to the Pratt College of, uh, what is it? New York's Pratt Institute. Had this a dis- is a design school, right? He had a disagreement with a professor over the complex math problem one times one. And he was on the red carpet at one of the award shows and went off on this weird tangent that nobody understood. And um, But he's come up with his own – he's patented some, patented some stuff, his inventions. Well, I got to say, I like his style. I, I can't agree with the one times one, but I, I like his style. I, I mean – yeah, I think it's just this. You make enough money. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, you just you can't. You're just like on another planet, dude. Like I call on all elementary schools, middle schools, high schools. I call to all the nursery school teachers and kindergarten teachers. I call upon all the schools of higher learning and all of the thinking branches of academia to do an immediate audit upon this false statement of one times one equal one. Well, what's an equal? Two, he says. Yeah. Two. They're going to just end up like that. They just go like, ah, we don't even. We got a system in place. We're just trying to. He also spelled higher learning, H-I-R-E-R, which is tough. Mm. H where? It's tough when you're oh. uh, higher, higher learning. Is that how you, you don't spell it like that? Dude? H-I-G-H. Higher. Yeah, what? Yeah, he might so, have his own way though. It's tough to, yeah, dude. When you when that doesn't help when He's you're like, challenging I'm a one times guy. one. <laughs> yeah, I'm more of a math guy. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, you're not really into arts and letters, you know. <laughs> you go, you're uh, Woo. you on that TV show? He goes, yeah, he goes, right. <laughs> uh, yeah. He this, says, I mean, you can make money, dude. I swear, it's 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 a spiral because you just don't. It's it's, and that's what I think happens to everybody. I and I truly believe they just get on another planet, and because you just don't, you're not talking to anybody. That's you end up being so crazy, and if you if you can't constantly remind yourself, you just you start floating away, mm. and then you, and then you, and this is the extreme version. I would imagine. And look, I'm not saying that he's maybe there's something that he's right. I don't know. And then good for him. Like I guess I don't know. I don't know what it is, but. I my first instinct is to be like, well, you're gone. Yes. Well, he talks. Oh, oh, this really shines some light on it. One times one equals one is an equation that predicts a negatively discharging universe without the ability to overcome the radiational expanse of magnetism, because one would have to have a negative discharge in order for it to not bond with. I mean, it's just, it's. Uh, yeah, it's nonsense. Dude. But is it, it almost it, like it's s- semantic? Was that the word they used? I think that's like you exactly want to go like, right. You want to go like, yeah, dude, but we're just like, you know, we got math and we got this and we're just doing this way. You could present this as like a new thing. Yeah. And then we then you can maybe listen to. But if you're presenting it to like change, we got to go change all these books yeah. and the system that we have, then it's... Because we're not really trying to make one and one bond here. We're just saying, you know, if you if you do two times two, it's you four. know, you got two twos, so it's four. <laughs> but you got one one, that's one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can say one times one is two. Good luck with your taxes this year. You're going to yeah. run into some problems. If you have one uh, and you, you know, like if you have, I don't know, if you have two and you multiply that two times, that's four obviously right mm-hmm. but if you have one and you multiply it one time i i don't know i guess if you multiply one one time it, it would, would be two. two well i oh. hope he's i hope he's right yeah wait what'd y'all just say well if you I multiply like they just worked it out well if you multiply one <laughs> one time yeah you multiply it one time then it yeah, would be two wouldn't it it can't it, it has to be two you, or you wouldn't be multiplying it well that's what he's saying 
I know. But I mean, I'm just one, I'm one, saying I'm starting to get one, into teriology. Then he here. goes, well, what about two times three? He goes, well, that's a little bit harder. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, that's, that's for my next paper. Yeah. You know? All this stuff feels like it's all works for one thing. <laughs> and then you go, but what about the day? And he goes, well. Yeah. I'm going to say, this guy's got a lot of power. I thought Hustle and Flow would be a stupid movie. And then I watched it and I was like, oh, this is pretty good. Yeah. Hustle and Flow is a great movie. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah it's, uh, I, I would bet. I'd lean on the fact that it's, uh, yeah, these they're, they're they're just gone, and it's it's, you know, and they've talked about this forever, and then people just go, yeah, 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 and mm-hmm. then you, and you, and it's slowly, it's only the people that are willing to listen to you that are around you, and I think when people think that someone's got money, there, I mean, maybe this dude's super smart. I don't know. He's probably super smart, but he's definitely gone. I already knows a lot of big words. I think there's a lot of that. I think more people know big words than they are super smart. And if you use big words, everybody just assumes you're super smart. He's not using any of these words correctly, though. But he's using them. <laughs> and to, <laughs> so that's... On the red carpet, he started some... I mean, he was using words like a, you can't even... Re- you couldn't mock him because it's like a crazy person talking. Like mm-hmm. It makes no sense. A bunch of big words. He has no time to be like, well, that's not how you spelled higher. And you go, yeah, so the meek would think is you, you, you spell, like, I'm not caught up in that world. I'm using other big words like. Yeah, he's talking about. Radiational expanse of magnetism. Yeah. You're like, but you can't misspell higher. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's like goes, anything. I can't. If you're arguing on Facebook and you you put the wrong your or you the wrong uh, there, I mean over. you're you're yeah your argument's it's dumb. It's done. It's done. And now everybody's like, well, you're so dumb, you can't even get this basic thing. Yeah. So your whole thing that you wrote out for 15 minutes, yeah. we don't care now. Mm-hmm. You lost. I did a math thing one time mm. where I was just. This is what I was just trying to get to. Was you it? created your own no. math. Okay. I just figured Dusty's got something. That's well, gonna- I kind of did do a math thing right one time, right where it's like. If you just add up some numbers, right? Like you add up 24 plus 24, that equals 48, right? Yes. But then you break down, like you add 2 plus 4, that's 6. 2 plus 4 is 6. And then that equals, and then you add the two sixes, that's 12. And then you add the 1 and the 2, and that's 3, right? So you just add all the double numbers. Let's see. So then you add 48. <laughs> 4 plus 8 is 12. Yeah. And then you add those, and it's 3. So 3 equals 3. Every time... No matter what you do, if you have um, like these numbers, I mean, it's 74 uh, plus, or do 73 plus uh, 12. 73 plus 12 equals. um, That one is three. 85. Right. right. So. Yes. So then you go seven plus three is 10. So that's, that's one. And then uh, one plus two is three. Add those two, you get four. So let's see, 85 is, 8 and 5 is 13. 13, and then 1 plus 3 is 4. Oh, it always... Every time they come... And now I guess it just is equal is equal, no matter what, right? But it just... No matter what numbers you do... What's the 10? 10, it just be 1 All right, plus so 0. so do another one. All right. And let's say... Uh, this was blowing my mind in a hotel one day yeah. alone. I was... I had to call several people. Let's, there, uh, let's type this out. We might have dustyology coming on. Yeah, here. yeah. yeah. Let's, so, well, let's type one out together. So give me an. Let's get an 13 equation. Thirteen. Thirteen plus ninety-eight. Ninety-eight equals. Uh, that'd be one hundred eleven. Yeah, one eleven. <laughs> one one one. So thirteen is ten plus three. No, right. one plus three. One plus. Oh, just add the digits. Uh, up. Yeah. And then the, then you that do nine. Four. Nine plus eight. Nine plus eight. Yep. Nine plus eight, and then this would That's be seventeen, and then. Um, so would you go to one plus seven? Yes. So then you go to one plus seven. Yeah. So I think that would be three. I mean, one plus one plus one. I mean, when it gets to three digits, I don't know. I mean, one I, plus three uh, equals. But I think oh, it's, so, so you, one plus. So it only works. One. Well, I don't know. Let's see. One plus yeah. one is three. One plus one plus one is three. Okay. Okay. So this would be four. Okay. Plus seventeen. Yeah. Equals three. No, no. Four, four plus one seven okay. is, 21. is eight. Yeah, is okay. eight. Yeah. So, so it's eight. Okay. Four plus eight is 12. And then put one plus two is three. Oh, I, I'm having, I don't know where you're. Right. All right. So you got this, right? So yeah. 13 plus 98. Yeah. Uh oh. Yeah. 
one, one, one. So that's three. Could be yeah. falling apart. And this is four. This is 17. Then you got to add those. So that, that's eight. So then you got eight plus four. Yeah. That's 12. One plus two is three equals Whoa. three. Boom. Uh, one plus seven, eight, 12. One plus two is three. It was blowing my mind. Have you ever seen any? Uh, no. Just talked about I anywhere? just was walking one time. I was in Grand Rapids, Michigan. I was just walking. I started doing, I just added up. I don't know. I just always do this weird numerology thing. I'm always trying to see what like numbers are. And what, you know, so you'll add them together to see what it equals. And I go, oh, well, that's weird. That adds up to the same thing if you just keep adding them together. And then I got back to the hotel. I just kept writing all these problems. I was like a madman in the room. And I, it never came out unequal. So but, like just saying, wait, are they always three or they're always just the same number? Just the same number. It always yeah. equals each other. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Do ten, uh, so 10 plus 10 is 20. 10 plus 10 is 20. So, yeah. So then, you know, 1 plus 0 is 1. Mm -hmm. 1 plus 0 is 1. 2 plus 0 is 2. And then you add those two up. Two. One plus I mean, one two. Yeah. every time. <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean? So I'm just saying, I'd like to get together with Terrence. Now Hyatt. let's merge that yeah. with Terryology. One <laughs> now that is, really shakes uh, it up. Is that common core mass? Like common core mass price? Something? That's probably a lot it looks like. Yeah. Yeah. yeah common core is a lot of like 22. And then you go, well, let's make that 20 plus two. Yeah. And then you can, yeah. Well, you know, it was funny is I made fun of Common Core Math, but I think I add like Common Core Math. <laughs> I, I do think Could have I, benefited from it, maybe? Uh, I think I just, that's how I, th that's how I would add something. Like it's, you know, like 73 plus 12 is like I'd go 83, 85. So I just go 73, 10 is 83, then I add the two is 85. Yeah. So like that's just how I think. So, yeah, I've made fun of Common Core, and I mean, it could be the best thing I've ever been part of. <laughs> but I think it's, like, hard to – I don't know what they're doing. But that's that's just how I I add. I just started adding like that on my own. I, they, they gave me their method. I go, come on. <laughs> well, that's what I did, too. I mean, I just – in my head, to do math, I break things down in a weird way. Yeah. But it works for me. Yeah. Yeah, I do, too. That's theology. We got it. Yeah. That's I mean, I, this was blowing my mind for a while. I had to, I called a couple people that day. Yeah. <laughs> I had to tell you about I think this. I just stumbled on something. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, you called a couple more now. So you better yeah. find out if it's. Uh... Yeah. I mean, I, hopefully people can understand this, what I'm saying by listening to a podcast. I think math yeah, teachers we, will be like, yeah, that's math. Well, of course it's math, right? But it's just an anomaly that I don't think anybody really notices. Yeah. 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 I mean, I think to me, it's like, just equal is equal, right? With numbers. So whatever's on this side, if you add it all up, it's going to be equal to what it was equal to with, you know, adding it a different way. Yeah. We're post, if, if people watch this, we're have you do one when we get done and the day the thing comes out, we can post it on like a story. Yeah. Right. And oh, so yeah. then you could explain it. So if like, if someone's listening to this and they're, it's hard to be like, well, what is happening? They could go to, Oh yeah. You can go and, hey, dude. and, but it was blowing. It still blows my mind. But yeah. but that day, I was like, I got to do a show tonight, and I don't know, <laughs> I don't know if I can. I don't know how I'll do it? How am I going to get it together? <laughs> yeah, did you Did you talk about it? No, I, I never talked about it. Actually, I forgot about it until just now. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> but I was like, yeah, I mean, it's. I tr I don't. I I think I tried to talk about it, but it just doesn't make sense. To talk well, about. it's like everything kind of works perfectly. I mean, that's what's crazy is like the world is like, uh, you know, someone believing in God is like, you're like, well, everything's too perfect. Yes. It's just too, everything's perfect. <clears throat> yes. Where it's like, even it could be weird. It's something like that. That's like, yeah, just, it all kind of makes sense. Yeah. I mean, and there's a lot of, like a lot of uh, YouTube people, I'll just call them that, that I would listen to, you know, their podcast and what. A lot of them are not Christians, but they still believe in a higher power because mm -hmm. they're like, it is too perfect. Yeah. Everything does work together too perfectly. Yeah. Well, there are people who worship numbers, like numerology. Yeah. That's a thing. And you can kind of see like how you could get into that. Yeah. In a way. I mean, if aliens... Like the numbers never lie. That's right. Yeah. But, but what science would... You know, where words you take them different ways, different meanings, different numbers are numbers. Numbers are numbers, and even if aliens came here, we might call the number something different, but they still know that two things is less than three things. They could be so far ahead of us too. Yeah, not even doing numbers. 
They would go, Dusty would show him yeah. that. They, yeah, we learned that in kindergarten. <laughs> yeah. No, I think it blew him away. I yeah. like to think that aliens are less, if they existed, are less smarter than us. And that one day they fly in and they go, having some ship trouble. Can you guys help us get back to our planet? And then they're just like real hicks. You know what I mean? The aliens <laughs> yeah. are just like dipping and they're like. <laughs> That's why they visit the certain yeah. people here on Earth. Yeah. yeah. They yeah. Thing got it. a hammy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah uh, like my spaceship's broken. Can you help me rebuild this carburetor? This is uh, from the Dinosaurs yeah. episode. <laughs> okay. Dinosaurs episode. Another very, very popular, some people's favorite episode of the year, the Dinosaurs oh, episode. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, this just happened. So I didn't leave this off. This just happened. So now a lot of people are buying, private investors are buying dinosaur bones. And their Christie's auction was going to sell one, I think maybe this past weekend, a T-Rex named Shin. S H E N, and it was supposed to go for like twenty million dollars, but they pulled it off the auction because there were some questions about its authenticity, how much of it was real, and how much of it was plaster cast. So apparently, with most of these dinosaurs, they do replicas of the bones that they're missing to make them full. And this one had a lot of similarities to some other ones, so they so they took it off because there's some questions about it being a fake. So they would be like. Would you know how much is real and how much is... I think they advertise it as 54% mm-hmm. real. But then some other paleontologists, there was another dinosaur named Stan. And they're like, that looks a lot like Stan. Mm. And then they looked at the bones. They're like, I think those are Stan's bones. And they think they maybe made a plastic caster or whatever whatever it is that were, that they do to replicate it. So now they're taking it off till they figure out how authentic this thing is. Jeez. And they think... Uh, It'd be it'd go for twenty five million dollars. That that's what they were thinking it was going to go for. It was hit the auction block on November thirtieth, but so it's but it they took it off because what is the auction thing that you're saying? Christie's. Yeah, Stan sold for thirty one million. What is Christie's? Am I not? Is that right? No, I don't. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. I, don't I don't know what it is. Is that just the famous auction company? Oh, you or got to so, go so, to this auction. I'm thinking about Sotheby's, but Christie's is another one, right? Yeah, Christie's is a British auction house founded in 1766. So you go there in Hong Kong if you want stuff. I guess so. But it's like they're only they only do like big things. Yeah, you really got to roll in with some money. Yeah, yeah, you got to have a 51 percent accurate dinosaur. I wonder what's like what's the cheapest thing that goes at Christie's? Mm. I, don't know. I don't have a list you know, of inventory on here. You all, yeah, you always allow cookies. Uh, you know, sometimes. Yeah. But this browser, when this I quit cookies. this browser, all those cookies are gone. Oh, really? Yeah. You clicked on Christie's cookies? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Anyone? Anyone? Oh, no. biscuits. All right. Not bad. It's a Nashville reference, probably. Yeah. Oh, they, don't, okay. they don't have a list of what's on here. Let's Is it on uh, yeah, Wikipedia or some? Like Christie's? I got some stuff. I mean, look, like this this uh, you know piece of furniture sold for $8.4 million. So people are buying a dinosaur shin? For millions of dollars? No, it's a dinosaur named Shin. <laughs> Look at that. What's it's not yeah. just an individual <laughs> okay, Shin bone. Okay. So, S-H-E-N. so can you, if you do a, an auction on it, can you like auction, you can do it online? Okay. You no, mean bu- buy it? I don't think you you and I could list something on yeah. here. But, but No, but I mean like if, so if someone wants that watch, can they bid for it there? I think so. These are ones that have already been completed, but let's look at, uh, uh, maybe it might not have active ones on here. This month. That's it this month. Uh, yeah. Yeah, these this is just events that they have, but there's no listing as far as it I says can online, see. look at it, click it browse. Right where? On the right, far right. Because if you click on uh Christie's, you know, it's it's like if you wanted to buy this. Well, this is like a class right here. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Hmm. Huh. They also recently mm. found the skeleton of a bird that from the dinosaur era that very similar to the birds we have today. So now they're saying, well, how does that fit in the whole evolution of dinosaurs to birds? Mm-hmm. If this bird, I'm throwing that out there for you, Dusty. Oh, was this? Bird I'm sorry. Was say it again. Thing? They recently found a new skeletal remains of a prehistoric bird. This they, they okay. said it's very similar to the birds we have today as far as beaks and stuff. And they're like. We got to figure out how this fits on the evolutionary scale since mm. dinosaurs came from birds, oh, or birds yeah. came from dinosaurs. Excuse me. 
Yeah, I mean, that's uh, it's always that weird kind of, like, like, I don't know, it's like circular reasoning or whatever kind of thing where they're like, oh, well, this doesn't fit our, our thing we got going on now, so let's try to see how it fits rather than going, maybe the thing we're doing right now is wrong. Mm-hmm. Mm. They're like, well, what we're doing's right. This doesn't fit. Yeah. So how do we make it fit? Yeah. All right. How do we make $25 million off these bones? Right. They're like, we found a bird that basically disproves our idea that dinosaurs turned into birds, <laughs> but we've already invested a lot into saying that dinosaurs turned into birds. So how are we going <laughs> to manipulate this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's, that's what true. I think. Like they, you know, because they're like, well, we already, it's, it's just like a pain. It's yeah. annoying. Yeah. Yes. It's a lot. To be like, a lot. I would think you would be like, you'd be like, wow, that's what's awesome though. Right. It's like you're just out of nowhere. You're like, man. That's what I'm saying. That's science. Yeah. The scientific discovery of being like, whoa, this blows the whole thing off. You know, it's like, let's get into this. This is science. We're mm. finding some stuff. But but if you're like, if you question that, you're anti-science. Uh-huh. And I'm like, oh, wouldn't we want just all these amazing discoveries all the time and dig into new things and new theories and new ideas instead of being like, nope, this is it. Do you think if you have the T-Rex and you buy it and you put it at your house, like you think you ever have, you get so used to it that you have people over and then at the end of it, someone's like, you know, they have a T-Rex here. And he's like, <laughs> oh. All right. Yeah, I'll show you. I forgot. <laughs> Real fast. Yeah, yeah. You forget to even really bring it up and show it because you're just like, I'm just so used to seeing it yeah. every day. It just takes up a whole room of the house. It takes it. Yeah. And you got to go in. They're like, dude, how do you not show everybody this? Because I've had it for five years. I don't yeah. I barely come in here anymore. It's dusty. The yeah. hallways, the rib cage. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You, go, uh, you would need to have it just be out. Yeah. So you just remember every day. Yeah. Because otherwise you would forget. You know, you just would be like, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, this whole thing? Yeah. <laughs> That's Shin. <laughs> yeah. Uh, who's that, Stan's cousin? Yeah. We call it Shin because Shin was the bone we found, and then we created the rest of the bones <laughs> and said yeah. this is what it would have yeah. looked like. Yeah. <laughs> Looks yeah. like Stan to me. <laughs> yeah. Stan's cousin. Dinosaurs had cousins. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We all did. All right. This is from the uh, the MAPS episode. There was a uh, restaurant in Great Falls, Virginia, named Serbian Crown. It was open for 40 years, serving French and Russian cuisine. But all of a sudden, they noticed on the weekends, st- steep decline in their business. They eventually figured out that someone had hacked into Google Maps and said that they were closed on the weekends. And they think it was one of their competitors. And they could not get back in to uh, change it. Eventually, had to close their doors. That's crazy. And they don't know who did it? They think, uh, I don't know if they know specifically. I just read it as one of their competitors. Why could they not get back in and do it? I, well, I think the whoever got in there took control of it. And then by they had a long time getting Google to respond back to them to yeah. fix it. By the time they did it, they said it's too late. I'll tell you who it is right away. Just reading the first paragraph. It says they proudly served lion meat at this oh. restaurant. It's got to be one of these animal rights oh, activist yeah. groups. They got in there and they put a stop <laughs> yeah. to this. Yeah. In Virginia? Yeah. Who are they competing? I mean, it, is there another restaurant that serves lion meat in Virginia mm. that's trying to get them shut down? It's an animal rights group. There's no 100%. way it's not. Yeah. They're like a competitor. Who are you yeah. competing with? You go, who is it? <laughs> is it Francisco's? They do tigers. Why does it matter? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's crazy. I had a dentist that I was going to, and they were putting some, uh, you know, like some crowns on some teeth. And so they ground some teeth down and put a temporary tooth on there. And then one morning I was leaving to go to my appointment and I pulled them up on Google Maps and it said permanently closed. (laughs) And I had a real freak out, but it was, they didn't, they had not closed. So something, and I told them when I got there, something had happened. Somebody had hacked them and said they were permanently closed. Hmm. Was it the so guy that funny, was I it know. the guy that killed Cecil the Lion? I think he was a dentist. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Wow. He was. Yeah. He was a dentist. I would pay I money so. for your reaction when he saw that. Yeah. You're like, what? Where was I? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A lot of lion stuff going on here. Well, that's what made me think of it. Yeah. Were, yeah. Yeah. There was a woman in L.A. who went for a walk and got hit by a car, and she sued Google Maps because of the direction it told her to walk, which was not safe. 
Mm. Oh. Mm. Did she win? Uh, let's see. You guys can Google had better lawyers than she did. Filed a lawsuit seeking more than 100,000. Uh, 100,000. That's not enough. They That's might small be. time for them. What happened to her on the walk? She yeah. got hit by a car, but she said the GPS that that suggested was dangerous and took her down some dangerous roads on her walk. I've, I mean, for years I've walked with Google Maps and sometimes they'll say, you know, be careful. Yeah. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've had them say stuff like that. Like, watch out. Yeah. Like, this is not a main, this is yeah, like, like, keep your head yeah, on I've a swivel. Very, I mean, it, it's not like prominent. It's not like it doesn't go being, 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 be careful, you know, but it does in the, in the liner notes. Yeah. Personal responsibility is basically gone now. Yeah. And then yeah. there, it's like, and that's, but that's what they, that's what they probably want. I'm sure they pay this because it's. I'd rather have that customer be so dependent on me mm -hmm. than be like too bad. Yeah. Because then you're on your own, and so yeah. like now that person is like, oh, so it's like you can just sue them if they're wrong, and I bet there's enough of those cases that it's like you. It's. I wonder if it is. It's better to be like yeah, that. Means you're so dependent on me, you can't even like operate as a regular person. And so just be, you're, you, I'm, yeah, you, you just so rely on me. So mm -hmm. then you're like, and now, cause there's no more just like, yeah, don't do that. You're going to get hurt. Yeah, like, you're it's an adult. like, well, it's not set up and I should have thought, and you're like, no, 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 you should have, should get like, like that's the old, you know, it used to be like, yeah, yeah, you run into that. It's going to hurt. Yeah, you get hit by mm -hmm. car, of course. Yeah, look both ways before yeah. you cross the street. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Or or find your own way to get yeah. there. If you if you Do don't like the way. yeah, if you don't like the way we've sent you, well, get a map. Draw it up yourself. Mm -hmm. We're just getting you there. We didn't tell you it's gonna be safe. Yeah, just showing you where it's at. Yeah. This is from the uh, artificial intelligence episode we did. Dustin Chafin was on that one. So scientists at Georgia Tech have come up with a artificial intelligence developed that can detect cancer, like bowel and colorectal cancer, by listening to the sounds of people's farts. And this machine hooks up to you. It's called Synthetic Human Acoustic Reproduction Testing, SHART for short. And Is it? Yeah. And they listen to hours yeah. and hours of audio from healthy and unwell patients to determine farts sound different if you may have cancer. So they think it could save lives by... AI listening to your farts and maybe detecting it quicker. Whatever they do, they set up like a, they set your big Thanksgiving meal, put a couch <laughs> yeah. and a TV, yeah. you sit on a speaker on a couch, and then they go, just watch the game. <laughs> <laughs> sit back and relax. <laughs> sit back and relax. And he goes, sure, is this how it goes? Go, yeah, yeah. You're sitting on a whole speaker system down there. And if you're going to Brian's doctor, just a bunch of dudes in there. Yeah. You, know, one time. <laughs> you walk in the room, boys. It's just like a <laughs> symphony in the room. Yeah. Smoking cigars. Yeah. Just men are in there hanging out. This is the best gig I've ever been a part of. <laughs> cigars, drinking. <laughs> Burr. <laughs> like, uh, well, I'll stop there. Right. But mm. I wanted to say, I made some predictions at the end of last year about this year. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Leanne Morgan was on our last episode of 2021, and I predicted that she would record a special in 2022. Boom. She just did it. It's going to be out on Netflix. Wow. And um, so I nailed that. I predicted for you, you're going to have a late night special. Mm -hmm. Didn't happen, but. Oh, uh, well, I'm sorry. What's Circle TV, dude? Mm -hmm. Boom. You're right. Late late night I got show it. 4.5. Yeah. I got it. It airs late at night sometimes. Yeah. I think next year you're going to get a, just a number by itself. You're going to be on TV of a number by itself. Yeah, just four. Channel, channel four. Just channel yeah. four would be great. Yeah. And then for you, I said you'd meet Seinfeld, get to know him, become buds with him. It happened. Yeah. And I said you'd play golf at Augusta. I don't think played that. Played it. I did not play at Augusta. I played Sage Valley, which is next to Augusta. But uh, yeah. But I got some predictions for 2023. All right. Sure. Well, yeah. first of all, let me just say yeah. when this year started, you were maybe occasionally headlining yeah. clubs like a Wednesday night or occasional, yeah. and now you're headlining every weekend clubs, right? Yeah, 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 man. Mm -hmm. yeah. Dusty joins our podcast. He's now selling out clubs everywhere and starting That's to true. do theaters, right? Wow. Going to yeah, 2023. Next year, we will do some theaters, yeah. Mm -hmm. And now mm -hmm. you are starting to do arenas and doing Bridgestone Arena. Bridgestone Arena. Well, well I'm very thankful for this podcast. This podcast has been a big help doing that. Yeah, don't so, ever forget that. Yes, I mean, it is. It is uh, a big help. 
<laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> I predict you are going to put out a your first one hour special in 2023. Right. Well, I, I hope so. I, I probably should have done that this year, but I hope so <laughs> yeah. for next year. Yeah. Well, you're going to do it. You're going to be in Variety's 10 comics to watch. Oh, I like Ooh. that. That'd All be right. Fun. Yeah. And you're going to win a Grammy for uh, Hello World. All right. I like it. Yeah. What about, nice. for, what about for yourself? Oh, I'm going to be the best of all. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, first of all, I became a dad in 2022. That's yeah, right. It's been yeah, my yeah, best year. Which we could never. No, one, <laughs> no, 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 no. Nobody No one that. saw that coming. Yeah. Now, we knew it coming into <laughs> the right. year. Yeah, yeah. But it's been the best year for me of any of you. Yeah. But, I think it's been good for you. I think you uh, have looked the best. I think you look better than you ever did. Yeah, I look good. You do look good. 2023, my dry bar special comes Athletic out. Athletic greens. Yeah. There you go. So, yeah, that's big. Yeah. yeah. So I think the numbers will be big on that. I hope so. I think that's so too. Be good. I think so. I think it's going to be good. That. And it'll be a nice, uh, and it'll be a jump up, and then you're going to see a jump up of I hope so. the road work. And, and then you'll be lottery winning br- breakfast coming in here with a fur coat. And, <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? Big ain't going to be meek anymore. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. I think I'm condescending now, Dusty. Yeah, you wait. I know. I you wait. Yeah. You wait. <laughs> <laughs> My head's going to be so big, I won't yeah. even get through the yeah. door. Yeah. It looked so, like he has less hair. <laughs> <laughs> More area to cover. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I would like to see, I think, in like two years, you're on this podcast, you have a full set of hair. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. Brian Urlacher, I just yeah. do the transplant. You just show yeah. up, never really talk about it. Just have, I mean, just full set of hair. If, can the three of us agree, if Brian does show up one day with full head of hair, let's just never bring it up. Yeah. yeah. Let's just move on. Well, I did it as Dusty. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. You mean, like, I mean, you try real to pass it off as real, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. You're like flipping it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, guys. What do you guys it's like? <laughs> you have trouble reading because you yeah. had it in your eyes. Today we're going to talk about hairdos. And, uh... <laughs> Anybody want to say anything about my hair? <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, we predict everybody listening, you are going to have a great 2023. Uh, you know, the, uh, everybody that does listen and you come to these shows and you support all of us, it's none of that's lost on us. Uh, we are here uh, because of you, and uh, we appreciate that. And uh, you're, yeah, you're awesome. And my the shows, the people come. I mean, I can't tell you enough. All the people that come to shows, the the comics that I bring out, and they talk about the crowd that I get to perform in every night. How great that crowd is, yeah. and how nice everybody is, and uh, the fact that you know that's exactly what I wanted to. I, you want to perform in front of just just you know, I, everybody's great. I truly believe majority, the entire, basically the entire world is awesome people. And so those are the people that come and, uh, that's all created because you guys are awesome. And, uh, and so that makes it, you know, wonderful and it makes it easy to perform in front of, and it makes it, uh, it's exciting and it's fun to get to go out in front of you guys. And, uh, so none of that, it will ever be lost on me. So we can't thank you enough for that and coming to all this stuff. So, yeah, that's it, I think. Good deal. Yeah. Uh, we will have a best of next week. Uh, truly, have fun. Get with your family. Uh, and uh, we have fun with your family. And if you don't, you know, you have fun with them. Yeah, you're going to have a great time. You're going to have a great time with your family. That's what it's all about. Uh, all right. We love you all. And uh, Merry Christmas. Happy New Year, and we will see you the first week of January. All right, bye.